at this time of year lots of us are planning our summer holidays and we don't want to get any nasty surprises when we're away. At the CCPC we can provide you with information to help you plan your holiday and make sure that it goes off without a hitch. When you're going on holidays and you're booking your own accommodation, the first place to start is to do some research. So reviews of accommodation can be really helpful. Um, and if you find bad reviews after you've already booked, it can often be too late to change your mind. So looking at reviews is a really good place to start. If you're looking for self-catering accommodation, the most important thing is to make sure that the listing is genuine. So uh, do some research again, make sure that you can actually find some verification that the place actually exists online. Never transfer money unless you're absolutely sure that it's genuine. If you're using a website to book self-catering accommodation and if the owner of a listing offers to give you a discount, if you book directly with them, you should be really wary because it might actually be a scam. Well, when you're going on holiday, it's important not to wait till the very last minute to start thinking about travel insurance and give yourself a little bit of time to do some research and compare different policies, see what the costs are and also the benefits that they give you. And importantly, look at the excess. So that's the amount of any claim that you'd have to pay yourself. Um, so a higher excess would mean that if you make a claim, you're gonna have to pay more money. Um, also, really important if you were planning any activities while you're away, like if you're going skiing or you're planning to go scuba diving, that you actually have cover for those activities. Um, and if you have private health insurance, you might find that you already have cover for when you're away. So you wanna make sure that you don't have two policies basically giving you cover for the same thing. If you tend to go on holidays a lot or even more than once a year, an annual or a multi-trip uh, policy can work out better value for you. So if you book a package holiday, one of the conditions might be that you do need to have travel insurance in place, but you're under no obligation to buy it from the travel agent. So you can go and get your own travel insurance. Uh, also, it can work out cheaper to get it from somewhere else, but you will need to provide your policy document to the travel agent to prove that you have travel insurance in place. If you book a package holiday, you have specific protections under consumer protection law. So it's up to the travel operator to make sure that your holiday goes smoothly so that all the elements that they've said they'll provide to you are actually provided. So if your flight got cancelled or if your accommodation wasn't available, it's up to them to put it right and make sure that your holiday still proceeds as planned. So when you book a package holiday, you'll get a contract which outlines all of the different elements of the package. And it'll also tell you how to make a complaint if something goes wrong. If you booked a package holiday and it ends up getting cancelled or if something significantly changes, then the operator has to give you a couple of options. So say for example, if the accommodation you booked isn't available, you're either entitled to replacement accommodation um, or accommodation that's of a higher standard, or if they can't give you that, they can give you maybe kind of a lower grade accommodation, but then refund you the difference in the price between what you originally booked and the kind of the lower standard. Or if they can't provide accommodation, then they should give you a full refund. Hiring cars abroad is one of the areas that consumers can have problems with. Um, and the most important thing is that you know what the terms and conditions of the contract are before you actually sign. So making sure that you read the small print and that you understand things like the level of insurance that you have with the car rental. So when you rent a car, there will be a basic level of insurance included in the rental price, but that might come with a very high excess. So if, for instance, you, know, you have a crash in the car, you might have to pay the first maybe 2,000 euro um, of, of any damage. So you might want to increase the insurance that you have. So two ways of doing that. One is you can buy it from the car rental company or you can get out your own policy as well. So worth thinking about those things in advance. When you pick a car up, you'll usually be given a picture of the car uh, with any damage marked on it. It's really important to make sure that there's no other damage to the car. So take photos as well. And if you see damage that isn't actually marked up on the sheet, go back in to the desk and actually point that out to them before you drive the car away. The rules around returning a car will generally be outlined in your rental agreement. Um, but when you are returning a car, I suppose two things to be aware of. One is it's useful usually to, if you can actually meet with a representative of the company um, and you can actually be there when they check the fuel and they check the condition of the car. It's also a really good idea to take photographs or a video of the condition of the car, both inside and out, because that's proof then, you know, if maybe later down the line there's some um, suspicion that you damaged the car, you can actually prove the condition of the car when you returned it. 
So if you've hired cars before, you'll be aware that most companies and in most countries, you need to bring the car back full of fuel. And if you don't, they're going to charge you for, for the fuel. Um, and it usually is quite an expensive cost as well. It's higher than you would pay yourself at, at a petrol station. Um, but in some countries and with some companies, they actually want you to bring the car back empty. And if it's not empty, they will still charge you for a full tank of fuel. So then you need to make sure that you actually drive it until it's you know nearly empty. So really important to be aware of what the fuel policy is and to ask if you're not clear.